So we have found our unicorn and Julie. And what's neat about today is, and Julie, I'm, I'm probably going to steal just something you were going to say, but this presentation is so chock full of strategies and ideas and information that you are going to absolutely want to take notes. And then at the end, there's a little uh, gift for you. I'm going to give you a prompt from Julie. So Julie, did I get it all right? You did. That's so good. good. And thank you for your sweet words. Oh my gosh. It's so much fun. Oh. Um, but we are, so this is Peg. And if you, you've seen, Peg Oh, I didn't introduce Pete. myself. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, there we go. Yes. Um, and you saw Peg and Pete as our keynote speakers and then, um, your presentation yesterday, but uh, like she said, we're from action coach. So this is going to be chock full of information. And I know that social media can be scary. It's something that nobody wants to do, or it's somebody who wants to do lots of it, you know, and it's scary because there's a lot behind it. It's a lot more than taking a great selfie. And um, there's a lot to dig into be behind there. So today's goal is for you to turn from being the head explode emoji um, into that empowered emoji, and we can make sure that you have all the tools to have a fantastic organic social media presence. So um, throughout the presentation, you're going to see, like in the top left corner of the screen, is a QR code. It's just a shortcut to get to a website, so, so we don't have to type all that stuff in. Um, if you have an iPhone, you can use your camera app and just scan that. It'll take it directly to the web page for more information. And if you have a Android phone, you can download a multitude of free and safe QR code reader apps. Um, so you don't have to do all that stuff during today's session, but we're gonna make sure that you get those slides. And if you um, need more information on the slides, you can absolutely scan that. It'll take you exactly where you need to go. Um, so this is one of my absolute favorite quotes when it comes to sales, but for social media, it is so important. All things being equal, people do business with and refer business to people that they know, like, and trust. And five years ago, especially 10 years ago, the only way to, the best way to get business was to shake hands with somebody, which we're certainly not doing that. We can fist bump or elbow bump somebody right now, but the, um, where it's a referral, some you did some fabulous work for somebody and they told a friend or family member. And that's how people got to know, like, and trust you. What's nice with social media is because you're creating a relationship with them online that you are able to, they are able to know, like, and trust you through your online social media presence. So Peg's going to go over the fears about social media. And the reason Peg's going to go over this is because I will verify that these are real because our team gave them to me is what their fears were about social media and their business owners too. So Very let's true. go for it, Peg. So as we're going through these, um, what, you know, Pete and I are business coaches and work with all kinds of uh, companies throughout the U.S. And we see these fears. So we um, are dealing with them every day. So when we put these together and we're looking at their marketing, we're saying, what's stopping you or hurting you from going to social media? So if you keep going, Pete, uh, Julie, we'll go ahead and, and if you click all one right. at a time. Um, I don't understand the technology. So the fear is I don't know how to do it, or I'm afraid I'll say the wrong thing, which I want to tell you that that has happened to not our client, but one of our clients competitors in a market um, outside of Columbus. It's called Dayton, Dayton, Ohio. And they actually did say the wrong thing. It was a mess. And they took a 30 year old business and guess what happened? They lost employees. They lost, um, customers and they're really hurting because they got political. So I think it's really important that some of these fears, you do need to know what you're doing, but making sure that somebody who knows what they're doing will help and guide you makes it easy um, because you don't have time. The reality is I don't have time. Well, then let's hire someone, let's invest in someone and let's do it right. Um, I don't want my team on social media all day. Um, you do need to engage in social media. It is the, a free form of advertising that you need to really invest the right person in the right way to make sure you're capturing everything and, um, and creating some guidelines for your team to not be on social media is okay just because you are on social media. 
Um, I'm afraid people will bash us and it will hurt our reputation. That is not true. There are ways in which you do need to have a process in which you're going to answer back on uh, feedback which Julie will talk about at the, at the end of this, of how do we respond to reviews. But um, social media invades my privacy. Um, it's here to stay. And it's, um, you can judge, really you can judge what you're gonna say and how you're gonna say it and who's gonna follow you and who you're gonna follow. Um, it's a waste of money. Well, obviously it is, it is a free revenue. It is a, way of, a free way of doing it. But the question is, are you doing it right? And are you capturing this? Uh, my team is too busy with other projects. The reality of it is your team might be too busy. And a lot of times what we have is we have, hey, you know what, Susie does good posts. Let's just go ahead and have her do it. We put people in charge of this that aren't thinking of the back and the technical. They're not thinking of the full picture. Um, but it doesn't have to be your team. I would recommend having somebody who really knows what they're doing because, you know, it is about, it is a marketing forum. And then too many for too many terms, every platform is different. Um, it is and it isn't. Julie's going to show you some simplicity right here. So with that, Julie, I'll turn it over. All right. And um, I've heard every single one of these from my clients, from our firm's clients, and from our firm. There you go. Yes. Um, so we're going to look a little bit about what we're dealing with. So every single one of those teeny tiny little icons, and if you... Um, after the session, if you scan that QR code, it's going to give you a way to zoom into that from the website that I borrowed this from. Um, each one of those is a social or online channel where people are interacting. Um, I love the fact, this is by um, researchers, Brian Solis and Jesse, um, who have done this research for 20 years about social and how it changes us online um, social. So the, I love the prism, you know, because the prism, all the different colors go into the one white light, which is a single being. Um, and there's a million ways that you can interact online. So people are doing mainly four things online. Um, they are listening to each other, to each other, getting reviews, things like that. They are co-creating, they're posting videos, they're sharing photos, they're sharing photos of their family, they're, they're great creators. Uh, they're engaging with, this is how human contact works right now when we can't hang out together and, um, and hug and all those great things. And they're also learning. So they're learning about your company. You can Google anything in the world and um, they're doing that online as well. So again, the QR code in the bottom, that's where you're going to find more information on that. So we're gonna to talk today about platforms, three of those little dots on that big conversation prism. Um, the big kahuna is Facebook, obviously. Zuckerberg's got the biggest market share of social media of anybody. Um, when I say daily active users, that means one individual who accesses the platform daily. So this is not somebody who has a Facebook account and they don't check it and they're on there once a month. So daily active users, there's 1.79 billion daily active users in the world. That is up 12% over last year. So when people tell you Facebook's over and you got to move on to the next great thing, not true. They're growing year over year. 68% of the American public is on Facebook as a daily active user. So pretty much your potential customer has either them or a spouse or a family member who is on Facebook. So you're going to reach them. The U.S. is only 10% of that daily active, that 1.79 billion. However, we spend 48% of the money on ads and from ads. So 74% of high earners, that's an individual that makes $75,000 or more, they're on Facebook. And the average Facebook user checks their um, Facebook an average of eight times a day. All right, be honest. Who checks their Facebook eight times a day? Me, but I do this I'd for say, my job. I'd say even more. Yeah, yeah. So Instagram is the next platform we're going to talk about. Instagram um, owned by Facebook. So again, there we go. And it has 500 million daily active 
influencers. More of those are in the U.S. than um, Facebook. So it has a definitely a younger audience. 64% of the audience on Facebook is younger than 34. There are 130 million ads that are engaged every year by advertisers. And that like button, that little heart button in the bottom left corner is being clicked 4.2 billion times a day, which is crazy. So the last platform we're gonna talk about is LinkedIn. And I picked these three because um, these are likely where you're going to advertise with your business. Um, LinkedIn is professional platform. Um, this is where people do business. They're on there to do business. They have um, 706 million daily active users as of last week when I put this together. Um, and LinkedIn has a, has a tally that um, counts every day. So 44% of those earn 75,000. Um, every Fortune 500 CEO is on there. Um, and the movers and shakers of the world are on LinkedIn. It is the oldest demographic for sure. Although 38% of LinkedIn users are millennial. So they're really driving a lot of the traffic on LinkedIn. And there are more than 3 million company pages. It's a huge, it's a monster. So um, we can't, get through social, a social media class without talking about how COVID changed social. Um, there is, I'm not gonna talk a lot about this. We, we talked about this in a previous seminar that we did for, um, for this group, in fact. So, but it's changed since then, which, you know, it changes every day. So 62%, this was a recent survey um, just a couple weeks ago, 62% are shopping online more and Here's the big one. 51% of people plan to stay that way. So what's that mean? You need to up your social media game because people are just staying online. They've gone to an online shopping or online um, assessment of what they're going to buy and they're going to stay there. So we've got to get 85% of people were more open to digital offerings that you say, oh, I'm gonna do a product selection or a finished selection online. People are over Zoom or any kind of digital offering. They're like, okay, that's cool. 85% of people were more interested in that. More importantly, 85% of people placed increased value in digital experiences. So if you're not giving them a digital experience, then you may be losing out on business. 79% placed a value on companies that do good. So the um, showing that your company is a good company to work with, that is really important now. 43% of people are spending more time on social media. And this is not just in March when everything shut down. This is right now. People are connecting more on social media because this is how they're connecting to the outside world. And consumers, they want to be entertained, inspired, and positive. They're done with the wash your hands videos. Unfortunately, they're kind of done with the healthcare heroes. Um, they're, we're moved on to being entertained, inspired, and positive. John Krasinski from The Office with his channel, which, which his video, with his videos, Some Good News SGN on YouTube, he literally produced them in his living room. His children drew the logo to it. So it wasn't anything super professionally done. He got over eight episodes, 68 million views because it was positive. It made people happy. Um, so TikTok has gone crazy and the increase in users in TikTok, TikTok is not where you think. It's among older adults who just wanna be entertained. So, okay, let's, let's see what we can do about this. We've gotta change, we've got to adapt. Um, we need to acknowledge that things are different but not dwell on it. We need to beef up our social game. If you were posting once a month, you need to be posting once a week. If you were posting once a week, you probably need to be posting once a day or three times a week. And here's a side note to that. If your engagement starts to go down, if you're posting a lot and your engagement starts to go down, stop posting so much. Make it mean something, make it more meaningful. 
but make sure that like your receptionist is not doing that or somebody who isn't experienced in the analytics and the behind the scenes. So you're not just going, oh, a post, let's do that. So there's really a strategy behind that professional do really how you're going. So my favorite thing to remember when you're creating content, then content is anything from a photo, a caption, a video, anything like that. Content is anything that you're putting online and there's an art to the content creation. Um, is to remember old McDonald. It's E-I-E-I-O. Your posts need to, and you don't have to do all these at once, need to entertain. They need to inspire. So your inspire doesn't mean to be like, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to cry. It, hasn't, it is not that. It's inspire them to do something, to take action. It educate. Share something you know that people want to hear. You know, how to fix that hole in your wall, how to do this. Or by the way, you can call us and we can do it for you. Um, inform. Inform is generally sharing something that somebody else, the content that somebody else um, did. Like, okay, what's the new laws regarding this? That's an inform. And outrage. So I say this with a grain of salt. Do not make people mad all the time. But creating dissatisfaction with their current state of being in a positive way, like, oh, I really, I'm sitting here in this house that's built in 1954, true. Um, and I really kind of want it to be remodeled. Like, oh, I'm kind of not happy with that, that bath fixture the way it is. Um, creating that outrage, like, oh, I, this is just driving me crazy. They're going to start thinking about you. So this is my, let me pause this real quick. This is my favorite commercial right now. This is online content. It's from Coors Light. They did a brilliant job of acknowledging things that are different, but also giving people hope and not being super negative about it. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. All the sounds of the earth are like music. The breeze is so busy, it don't miss a tree. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a beautiful feeling. Everything's gone. Now we'll move on to slide 236, which covers our third quarter. <laughs> line 45, we were at 62%, and the men on line 40. Okay, I think that is so brilliantly done. Um, and they just, they, they hit the nail on the head. They noticed that, you know, you're on Zoom, like you're on Zoom right here, and um, and their bosses had that background. For I know I want to go to my background. <laughs> See, there we go. Can I go to your background? That's awesome. You can go to mine. Yay! Mm -hmm. um, so the next thing we're going to talk about is one of my favorite topics when it comes to marketing, and I think it's where a lot of people miss the mark. Um, is coming up with your perfect client, your PC. I call it your PC. Um, and, okay, I'm gonna enter the contest too, by the way. I saw that in the chat box. And your PC is a real person. You can give that PC a name. And this is somebody that you're gonna get to know. And this is who you're gonna target your marketing toward. So companies can have maybe three or four PCs um, don't do too many because I know everybody would want everybody as a client, but you really don't start with your best customer, start with your perfect customer, somebody who you love, an actual customer who has come back to you again and again, who refers you, who has really, really been your biggest fan and somebody you love to work with, make that your PC. So there's me right there. I'm going to be your PC for today. I'm actually probably your PC. Um, 
So, okay, I'm 44. I'm more than willing to tell you that. I'm female. I live in, in Upper Arlington. So that's important because I live in a relatively affluent neighborhood, but I live in a small house. So I'd be a perfect person to do an addition for. Um, I am married. I'm employed with Action Coach. I work for a small business. So I would appreciate doing business with another small business. That's something you need to know about me. Um, I work in marketing. So things that are, um, I love things that are clever. So I'm a homeowner. Um, you know, talk about your, their personality profile. We talked about DISC, that D-I-S-C. I'm an I, obviously. Um, I like relationships, people, things like that. I have children and they're young. So we're going to eventually grow out of this house. Um, you know, know things about pages they follow. What TV shows do they watch? What movies do they like? What sports teams do they follow? Um, and then these last ones here at the bottom, these are about getting to know the story of that client. What's their biggest personal challenge? What's the challenge that has to do with your business? So am I outgrowing my house? Am I, right? And what happens, make up the story of what happens if, if, I, as the PC, is not going to get that problem solved. What's my life going to be like? And if you're able to guide them to a solution, what's their life going to look like? These are some really, really important things. Write it down. Put, give them a name. You can name it Julie. Um, but this is um, so, so important. All right. Come on, little slide. Move on here. I think I don't want to move. Sorry, everybody. Oh my gosh. I rarely have a technical difficulty. There we go. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about video. And video is so important. And here's why. Facebook, Zuckerberg, has made it clear that their goal is to be number one in video streaming ahead of Netflix, Hulu, and even YouTube. So... What does that mean to you? That means when you talk about the Facebook algorithm, and I know that sounds like, oh, I don't understand algorithm. I don't understand that. So Facebook only shows you in your newsfeed what they think is important to you because they want you to stay on Facebook. And this, this is true for Instagram. This is true for LinkedIn. They want you to stay on their platform. So they're gonna show you what is important to you or what they think is important to you. So you might have a thousand friends, but you're seeing probably 50 of your friends post because those are the ones that you interact with. And Facebook and um, Instagram and LinkedIn know that those are important to you. So video is given a bump by those algorithms. So the more video that you do, even if it's five seconds, video becomes more and more important. In fact, I did a quote, I posted on our page a quote, and I just put a picture and then I put some text behind it. I used um, photo editing software, and then I used a video editing software to just put sparkles on it. it. Literally, the video was seven seconds. It got such good reach, and it was really nothing. It didn't, you know, it was just something, an inspiring quote, but it was because I put those little sparkles on it, it became a video, and it got a great reach. So a perfect Facebook page, um, and this kind of holds true for Instagram, not as much for um, LinkedIn. A perfect Facebook page is 60% video, 30% images, and 10% of links. So links are just like something you shared from somebody else, um, the, like a, an article about, you know, top 10 reasons that you should remodel your home. Video doesn't have to be in a studio. Casual is great. So when I first started with Pete and Peg, we well, I was like, guys, you got to do more video. You got to do more video. They're like, oh, you know. But Peg and Pete, if you um, don't know them already, they're not suit and tie people. They are casual. When you get to know them, they're going to have a glass of wine on the patio. And I said, okay, so your video needs to be a glass of wine on the patio. Because people who love you are going to love to have a glass of wine on the patio. So our we talk, we um, call it the honest truth with Peg and Pete, and they literally drink a bottle of wine on the patio and talk about business. 
So casually. Wait, we, we don't drink the whole bottle. <laughs> no, no, it's only five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can record a video on site, do a back, you know, do a behind the scenes, you know, get your phone up there and record it. It doesn't have to be really, really um, super hard to do. Consider doing captions. 80% of video is viewed on mute. So if you don't have um, words throughout your video or if it's not self-explanatory without your voice, consider putting captions or even just one word or just the highlights on in text. Facebook Live is a great way to engage. Plan on 10 to 20 minutes because how Facebook Live is works is your followers are going to be notified that you're now live. Hey, Action Coach Columbus is live. It's going to take them a second to tune into that. People love to touch their phones. So when you notify them, they're like, oh yeah. Um, and plan on about 10 to 20 minutes. So you could interview somebody. There's tons of different ways you could do it. Content creator, which is through, which is a tool that Facebook provides to you for free um, to pages allows you to store video for later use. Content Creator also allows you to store things for Instagram. So you can actually post on both platforms in one software. Um, and that is free that Facebook gives you. It allows you to store a bunch of videos and then post them um, on a schedule. You can schedule it. Okay, next Tuesday at 3 p.m. I'm going to post this. Although post on Wednesday, that's a good day to post. I like Julie, just I want to point out, do you notice when Julie first started talking about how it's about strategy? It's not just, oh, I want to post this today. Like if you noticed, you plan out your post, which you're going to get to. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Absolutely. Julie. Absolutely. Yeah, it's not a shot in the dark. Um, video ads are very effective and only 6% of marketers are using them. So you're going to stand out if you use a video. Um, so here's some video post ideas. Tony, I'd give you tons of information. Here's some ideas for you. Do a blog post, educate them. So that's E-I-E-I-O, that's the second E, educate. Do a behind the scenes of a project that you're doing. People are really interested in that stuff. Like how'd that work? Do a how-to, pick something super simple. Don't give them all the tricks because they really want to know you, but do a how-to, like how to do something and you'll be like, oh my gosh, I never even knew I needed to do that. Um, do a top five ranking of something. Do a customer spotlight. People love to talk about themselves. So, and people, and if they've spent a lot of money on a remodel, touring their house with them so they can show you what they love about it would be great. It's like a testimonial. So do a vendor spotlight. Vendors also like to talk about their products. Testimonials. And do a review of something, a book, a product, a tool, something you really, really love, something that you, you know, a pencil that you really liked. Do a video about that. Make it two minutes and people will love it. So we're going to, here's some do's and don'ts for Facebook. Um, some of these might blow your mind. Keep your messages positive. Don't say negative words. Don't get, don't say things that are downers. Facebook doesn't like people to leave, so they want positive. Edit it, edit your post, edit it again. And then remember that PC, that person that embodies your PC. More than likely, you know somebody like that. I use my dad. I'm like, dad, read this, see if it appeals to you. Um, and then have them look at it and see if they're inspired by it. Because you are not marketing to you, you're marketing to somebody else. So make sure the grammar is correct because Facebook will boot you out. Um, they will actually take, if you've um, paid for that ad, if you boosted that post, they're actually going to disapprove that because they think that somebody used Google Translate and they didn't have a native English speaker posting that post. See, there's your tidbit of the day. Help and give versus sell and ask. Help, help people. They still want to be positive. Use more video. Engage with potential clients. So I, um, I do social media for other people, for um, clients of ours and outside people. And um, one of my clients that I had just onboarded and I she said, okay, I need you to do my social media. Okay, great. 
So we talked about the strategy. We talked about her goals. We talked about what she wanted to get out of her business. Um, she's this particular one is a dental lab. Um, she was having a hard time hiring people. So we made a goal around making it a great place to work, which it is. Um, obviously she wants dentists. Those are her target market. We looked at her PCs and I, my next question to her, she went, what? I wanted a list of the 10 dentists that she wanted to work with that she didn't work with. And she went, uh, okay. To me with, we found a single one of them as the page. So they saw that Kentley Dental Laboratory liked them and followed them. And then now every time those, those 10 people post, we like, comment, or share their post. Um, so it helps build that engagement because they're going to see that every time. And then you're going to, they're going to go back and be like, huh, who was that? Let's click on theirs. And they're going to see our information. Targeting the right people. Find out who your PC is and make sure that your posts speak to them. Don't use the word you or your too much. So Facebook wants you to stay. They want you to be positive. So I'll give you an example. Are you feeling a little overweight? Try our product today for weight loss. Okay, that is going to get disapproved by Facebook right now because they don't want people to feel negative and big one is they don't want people to know that they're being targeted for that ad because they searched weight loss or they had some interest in weight loss or they had an interest in a page or something that involved weight loss. So if Facebook, you know, it's given away their secrets, which we're gonna use to our advantage. So don't use bad grammar. Make sure the theirs and theirs are right and the yours and yours are right. Make sure it's edited. Don't use all caps, it's online yelling. And this is on every platform everywhere. Don't use too many emojis. You can use some to make it really lighthearted, but don't, use, don't speak in emoji speak or text speak. Don't be afraid to throw a couple dollars at something that's doing really, really well. Um, if you have a post that's doing great, throw a dollar a day at it and then get it even further. Don't use engagement bait. Okay, everybody's seen them. Share if you like your kids. I'm like, well, my kids are okay, but I'm just not sharing that. Um, people, they know that people hate those, so they push those all the way to the bottom of the news feed. Nobody gets to see those. Don't use more than 20% text in your photos. Um, this is a rule that I heard that is going away, but for now, make sure that the 20% rule is followed. So if you have a picture, don't make more than 20% of that um, text. So these are some real actual posts from my feed. Um, these were things that were targeted to me. So um, this says, this Halloween puzzle game is waiting for your challenge. So first of all, native English speakers don't call those puzzle games. They would call it a puzzle. Waiting for your challenge really doesn't make any sense. Um, and so if you continually post things that don't make sense, um, the Facebook, and this is not personal, this is a computer that's analyzing all of this, they're going to eventually disapprove your ad account and you don't want that to happen because it's impossible to get it back. So, Okay, I blocked out all identifying information. This is something I actually saw. It's a real business that posted this. Okay, so I love the photo. It's really, really good. They used all caps. They used COVID. Come scratch that itch. That sounds negative. The word itch again. Nobody wants to hear about itches. Uh, typo. The new economy, nobody wants to hear about how the economy is bad right now. That's a negative topic, stay away from it. And the all caps all over the place. Okay, what's a hashtag? It's like, oh my gosh, you're talking in social media speak, what's that mean? So I'll tell you a story. My daughter is 13 and she of course is literally glued to her phone. Like if I see her eyes beyond this, in a day, I'm like, oh my gosh, hey, beautiful girl. Um, and I had to be on hold 
for a long time. So I handed it to her and I handed my phone. I said, hold on, I got to go help your sister. If they talk, just say, my mom will be right back. And she yells down the hall, mom, they said to push the pound sign. And I, she goes, what's a pound sign? And I said, it's a hashtag. And she, then she knew what I meant. So there we go, 13 year old speak. So what's a hashtag? So hashtags is a file folder within the system. It's something that makes it searchable. So hashtags can be really, really powerful because social media is a huge search engine, just like Google, and they're gonna find what they're looking for, especially like on Instagram, hashtags are big. Facebook is using hashtags and they're getting big. And then LinkedIn is also using hashtags. So it's a way to search. Um, use no more than five, no more than 10 in one post. So use a mix of popular and specific ones. If you use Instagram, it'll show you, and Facebook, they just released this release last week where it shows you how many millions of times people have used those hashtags. So use a mix of ones that are, that are being used millions of times and ones that are even custom or not very many times. And you're gonna hit the right mix of people to find your post. So a tag using the at symbol is an actual person or a company or a page. This is a great way to build engagement. So on Facebook, each of their followers are gonna know that they're tagged. So every time the, it'll say, Peg Burley was tagged in this post and then her followers and friends are gonna see that and they're gonna like it. Yay, for more engagement, more people get to see your stuff. And then an engagement is the like, a comment or share. And on Facebook, those are in order on your phone. So I tell my team all the time, like, comment, and share my posts because I need some help. Tell your team to engage with your posts and then you're gonna see more reach. So this is, um, I actually put this post together myself. So this is a dental lab that I was talking about. Um, I always say this is the least sexy picture I've ever posted on Facebook. It's a picture of floors. They got new floors and they're, um, when I take on a new client, I give the entire team my cell phone number so they can text me a picture. So their customer service manager, Christy, texted me this picture and she said, hey, I don't know if this actually means anything, but we got new floors today, they're pretty. And I'm like, yay, thank you. So I asked her who installed them and what did that, you know, so the post that I put together was, our normal business is a smile makeover, but today our lab got a facelift with new floors. Thank you to the local, local carpet store who put those in for making the lab shine. Guess what? They got fabulous reach out of that because Carpet Corner then shared our post and then everybody who followed them liked the post. You never know. There might have been a dentist that is our potential client who is watching that post. So we're going to move on to Instagram. Um, what I'm hoping is we'll have enough time, which we might for some questions. So pop your questions into the chat in the meantime, and then Peg's going to watch those for me and we'll answer as many as we can at the end. Yeah, I have a question now from before, but we can wait sure. until the end. No, do you want me to do it, it now? Yeah. Um, it was back when you um, were talking about your PC and all the things you should know about them. Connie asked, how do you know what pages they follow? So if you're looking at your PC. So you can, you can just dream that up. Um, you can actually say, okay, so somebody who follows HGTV and when you are doing the targeting within your post and I can show, I'm going to show you a screen of that at the end. When you're doing a targeting within your post, you can actually pick that as a, if you're buying an ad, you can say, okay, I want this ad to be seen oh. by people who like HGTV. I think, you know what, that's what she's looking for. I know what you're about to do. That will answer Connie. That'll answer your question. So sit tight. So the Instagram post tips, um, we'll just go through these really quickly because some of this applies across all the, the things that I said before apply across all the platforms. Um, so some do's and don'ts here. Do keep messages positive. Sensing a theme here? Share beautiful images. Instagram is 100% about images. You cannot post on Instagram if you do not have an image. Make that image count because people are searching for quality images. Use the Facebook stories to build engagement. So your followers are gonna be notified that you posted to your story. Stories are short-term, posts in your feed are long-term. They're gonna stay on your feed forever. Stories are 24 hours and they go away. Hide your hashtags, push those down to the bottom, use the little dots, use the little periods, 
period, enter, period, enter, period, enter. Push the hashtags to the bottom because the hashtags are there as a function. They're just to make a computer pick up your post. Hashtags um, look ugly though. So you want it to be clean. Add a call to action. Tell them what to do. Our link is in the bio. Get more information. Call us today. Tag a friend. Tell them to do something because they, they want to know. Use an easy custom hashtag. Hashtag action code 614. 614 is our area code. So that's our handle on a lot of things. And like and follow others. Go through your phone and like everybody in your feed, whether you actually like it or not. And I, um, and I laughed about that. My assistant, um, when I worked for Macy's, was, a very, was very young. And she grabbed my phone one day and just started la liking all these posts. And I'm like, oh, that was an ugly picture. She goes, I don't care. You need to engage with them more. And this was years and years ago. And I went, oh, my gosh, there you go. All of a sudden, I had all these followers. Um, so don't use too many photos. Pick like three or four that are really, really high quality. So don't use too many hashtags. It's considered spam. Everybody knows what you're trying to do. You're trying to get more reach. Don't forget your bio because people, are, if they love your picture, they love your post, they're going to look at your bio. So don't forget to make that meaningful. You get 170 characters to tell them who you are. Don't use photos without permission and tagging. Use that little camera icon that I put right there. Um, give credit where credit's due. And don't forget your audience. Don't forget who they are. So this is a fantastic post. I love it. It's by a um, handle only in CBUS, which is Columbus. Um, it's a photo they gave credit to the original photographer. And it's a photo of downtown Columbus that's deserted. And it said, who's still working from home? Me, me. Um, I just think it's, they use their custom hashtag and it's really, really simple. They got some great reach on that. Okay. This is somebody who is a bathroom remodeler. And it's amazing what taking out a soffit above a shower can do. I don't see a soffit in there above a shower. After pictures than before. Hard to decide what like better though, the light up mirror or the tile. So somebody just needed to edit that. It's no big deal. They did tag other people, which is a great way for them to see that you're doing their um, stuff. But the photo, look at that. They've still got their headphones and their clipboard in it. Um, make, be really, really thoughtful about that photo. So here's some LinkedIn post tips. LinkedIn, remember, it's a professional site. So just remember where you are when you post on LinkedIn. You can use the same content, the same story. You won the same award, things like that. Just make sure you modify those posts to be for Facebook, LinkedIn, or um, Instagram. Do create a company page. One of the very first things that I did when I took over um, marketing for Peg and Pete was um, all of us worked for a different company, which means we had typed in there, oh, I work for Action Coach, Action Coach Columbus, or McBurley LLC, which is our actual um, business name. And I created a company page for us, and I made sure that all of the employees worked for that. So we're all one cohesive group. Post as your company and then share that post on your personal page because you'll get followers as your company and then you have a lot of connections in your um, personal page. Use just a few hashtags to get noticed. LinkedIn is, is about hashtags, but they don't want a ton. Remember, it's a professional audience. Notify your employees of posts. So when you post as your company, hit that button that says notify your employees. So everybody who works for you is going to get is going to say, oh my gosh, they posted something. Let's share that. So have a compelling headline under your profile, your personal profile, because that's all, all people see when you comment on something. Assure that your employees work for your company, not just for something they made up. So don't use emojis and text speak on LinkedIn. Don't use industry terms that the public doesn't understand. Remember, you're posting to the public, you're not posting to somebody in your industry. For, don't forget to share your company's posts. Don't hesitate to follow others. Just follow a bunch of things, but also use that sparingly because anything they do, you're gonna be associated with. Don't forget to react to others' posts. People like people who are social. Nobody likes the person in the room who's just standing there against the wall. People like people who are gonna go out and talk to people. That's exactly what it's like online. 
So this is one of our clients. Um, they're a hundred person architecture firm out of, out of Columbus. They do commercial design and architecture um, and interior design. And their, their communications director is amazing. So this is a post about this really cool project that they partnered with another architecture firm on. They gave credit where credit was due. Um, it's super simple. They tagged the appropriate parties that were involved in the project and the photographs are beautiful. But of course, they're designers. It needs to be pretty. That means something to their potential clients. So this is one of my favorite CEOs. She's 22. Her name's Claire Coder. She is the CEO of Amp Flow. She also makes, they've gotten into the PPE game. So she always posts, she's a silly picture with her, um, with her product. And which is appropriate for her and things. She used the little number one emoji to stand out, but not, it's not obnoxious. She used three, um, she used three hashtags and she tagged the Home Depot Pro. So they're like, oh my gosh, this local business in Columbus, Ohio is working with the Home Depot. That's a big deal. So um, we'll talk just a briefly about paid advertising. This is something that we could talk for hours and hours about, but um, paid versus organic post organic is something that was free that you didn't pay for that people just shared naturally. Um, paid is something you threw a couple bucks at. It's one of the most cost effective advertising forms that you can do. Um, it's highly targeted down to the TV shows they watch. See, there you go. You can actually, when you put these posts together, I'll show you a, an example. Um, you can pay per view and reach, which is a, as little as a dollar a day on Facebook. Um, LinkedIn gives you cost per click. So it's every time somebody clicks on your ad or cost per impression options on LinkedIn. Um, cost per click is a little bit more expensive, but you know that they've clicked on it and not just seen that. And you set the budget. If you want it to be $200, great. If you want it to be $1,000, you're gonna get more reach, but you set the budget. Disapproved ads will count against you as a whole. So if you continually do stuff that makes Facebook mad and LinkedIn and Instagram, they're going to shut you down. And if you get disapproved for an ad, make sure that you have a professional look at it and tell you why it was disapproved. After that disapproved ad, you're done with it, delete it because they will look at that forever and always. Pay attention to ad guidelines for posts, the 20% rule for photos, and um, the you statements and the grammar. Boost your highest performing unicorn posts. You have something that went crazy, pay money and have it go crazier. Monitor insights and analytics to test and measure. There's a lot, a lot, a lot that you can analyze. It'll tell you how many men looked at your post, how many women looked at your post, how many people in what age groups, what shows they watch, all that kind of stuff. But remember, you could get a thousand likes on something, but no leads. The real statistic that matters is leads. So targeting ads on Facebook, remember your PC, use those stats as a guide, plug that stuff into Facebook, make a goal for the post. What do you want the audience to do? What do you want them to do? Do you want them to work for you someday? Do you want them to um, remodel their home? Include a clear call to action. Even a dollar daily investment gets you a call to action button that people can say, message me now. So this is, um, this is I actually screenshotted this from a ad that I just ran. I just used my one client as an example so we can see their kind of total story because it really is a story that you're telling. Um, so this is from an ad that I just, it's currently running for them. Um, we wanted to find people to work for them. We didn't want to do a job posting, but we knew that we need some people. This is one of the biggest challenges in her business is finding great people. Um, so we targeted people who were 18 to 65 plus. They lived within 50 miles of her location and people that they were interested in dentistry or they, so that means they clicked on articles about dentistry or they, um, they looked at videos about dentistry, that they were employed by um, anybody who made dentures, that they had a job title of cosmetic dentist, dental lab technician, dental surgery doctor, so dentist, or dental laboratory technician. And I targeted people who like their page and people who like your page and their friends. 
Um, so I, this is where you can, in this, um, in your ad manager, this is where you can do these things that are um, these targets that are so specific. So um, we have just a few minutes for questions. In the meantime, this is how to connect with us. So this is all of our social. You can follow us and we're going to give you some great tips. Um, I like um, following us too because they'll see what you've been talking about because we are yeah. using everything Julie said you're going to see and all if you when you follow us. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we do have a limited amount of spots for us to take care of your social media for you. Um, it, the fee is reasonable. We, and um, so if you want that, please feel free to connect with us. The QR codes at the bottom are our LinkedIn, so you can connect with us directly from there. Julie, will we give yeah. a complimentary, um, for anybody on the call, can you give a complimentary, I want to say assessment, because that's one thing we wanted yeah. to do, but we knew we didn't have enough time, is, hey, look at my social media and see what you think. Yeah, Can you do absolutely. that complimentary for them? A critique, them? yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, a critique with, and then and then if you want to engage with Julie, she, she can... Um, all kinds of like from a la carte to, to different kinds of programs. So, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So if anybody has any questions, let's look at the chat here. I think we're good. Yeah, absolutely. So everybody, thank you so, so much. And we appreciate you hanging in with us the very last session of the day. I got that honor. <laughs> thank you so thank much you, guys thank you julie oh um connie said are your fees based on how often we'd want you to post yes 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 so it's a la carte or in packages so yep. uh just uh, they just do the qr code or emailer and you're set right julie yep absolutely and when you email me make sure there's two e's in the middle awesome <laughs> thank you Thank Perfect. you guys. Thanks everybody. <laughs> oh, I like it. Connie said thanks. Sorry for the shout. Sorry for oh, the no, thanks. Awesome. She learned okay. something. I Yay! love Connie. Love it. <laughs> Fantastic. You can shout thanks. I'm okay with that. <laughs> thanks, guys. Bye-bye. All right. Awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and take back over just for a second to show a video. Um, the action team is welcome to um, leave if they would like to. Um, so let me go ahead and do this. So this is our next little video. Go ahead and do that. Hi everybody, welcome to Education Day. We're happy to be here. We're going to take a few minutes and explain some of our company information. I'm Debbie Steer with Steer Enterprises and I'm going to share with you our upgraded website which will help making uh, all of our products very accessible to you, as well as information to help you on every project. We're here to help from specification to samples to questions on installation. What I'm going to do is share with you our website. If you look at our website, it's steerenterprises.com, and you'll see across the top you have a lot of different tabs to choose from. All of our catalogs are listed, as well as our price list for easy downloading. It's a Google Drive, so you can download them, keep them bookmarked, add them to your tablets, your laptops, take them on the go with you. We also have a training section. During COVID, we did a lot of Zoom trainings and we recorded them. Call us for the password, since it is password protected in this section. But we want to inspire you. You can look at our slideshow and see all the different vendors that we represent and the products in installed pictures. It's really um, a, a large slideshow and it is alphabetical, so you can skip around and just look at what you want, but the pictures are beautiful. Social media is a huge part of what we do these days, so we scoured all the install pictures and put it together an amazing slideshow. Um, please feel free to follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, as well as Facebook at steerenterprises.com. I also have a LinkedIn page, Debbie Steer. Um, so please join me on that. And our manufacturers, the tab at the top, if you click on that, scroll past our beautiful scrolling pictures, you'll see all our manufacturers listed there. They're going to have the information about the manufacturer, a picture of the product, as well as their website, phone number if you have any technical questions, or you can call me. We also have a little bit of information so you can learn about our manufacturers. Bellwith Keeler is a new manufacturer we just started representing, a 130-year-old company 
making cabinet hardware. They follow furniture and fashion trends, and we have designers designing product on staff. We also have Hickory Hardware, which is a division of Bellwood Keeler, which is our more basic line that we represent. Um, we also still represent all our other manufacturers like Hamat, stainless steel kitchen sinks and faucets, hydro systems tubs, as well as Jacklow, Cartners, Strasser, and Terrastone. We're happy to help however we can. So please feel free to reach out. Our video library is fabulous. This is a YouTube channel that we have for Steer Enterprises and we divided it by stations per manufacturer. And it's everything from an overview of a manufacturer to uh, technical help. So please feel free to reach out on any of these tabs on the top. We have some blogs and information. Thank you for joining us. Please follow us on social media. Thanks again. Hi everybody. All right. So, um, thank you again to all of our sponsors. We are definitely coming to an end of uh, our second day. Um, and then we have the door prizes, I believe. Angela and Debbie are cutting up all of the tickets right now so that they can pull them uh, shortly. Um, and then I believe that we will be heading into, oh, these are other, oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, I'm still trying to figure out what we're doing here. Um, there's the slide. Um, and eat, drink, and be nary on October 8th. Uh, I believe they'll have this on their website that you can register for. And then we also have um, happy hour. I'm not sure if we are going to go ahead and be pulled out for that or not. So um, just kind of hang tight uh, if you want to be a part of that. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions, let me know.